Your favorite manga has 10 absurdly new strong characters in it. Now who are they? At the number 10 spot, I don't think anyone could complain about this at all. It would, of course, have to be Tenza. One of the best Yamada Asaimon I even witnessed on screen. He was able to even compensate for having someone who's not that strongly willed in combat with him. Being able to single-handedly take down or even face against the squid that is guarding the entire island of the Hell's Paradise. Is there anything you can take away from him? I don't think so. Not in the slightest, especially when you want to take into consideration his extreme battle-hardened will and his valor as a samurai. It also gives him an amazing sense of endurance in battle, making him honestly above average in comparison to most of the other Asaimon, if you ask me, because he doesn't have to stoop to dirty tricks or anything of the sort. He fights strictly as a samurai with honor, making him a polar opposite to Gabi Maru, which is honestly interesting to think about. With his tank running on E, he can still fight to the very end, and not only that, his astounding speed behind his sword allowed him to cut open a Tenzen easily. The only problem is that his speed also makes his attacks inefficient due to the sloppy technique behind them, but even then, when fighting, he will fight until he is practically dead, and in doing so, he has enough physical strength to punch the head off of someone. And this is without using the power system of the series known as Tau. Number 9, Shija. Well, with this sociopathic ninja, what more can I honestly say? Shija doesn't really use Tao to begin with, and instead uses a huge reliance on Nimpo and different ninja techniques, using the drugs that the ninjas are associated with, also partaking in the torture and enduring certain elements being implemented on them through ninja training, and also inflicting that same training and torture on one's own opponent. Also, Shija uses Nimpo hair techniques, which can completely stop enemies in their tracks and also makeshift armor makeshift a whistle for a signal and if you're wondering why shija is so low shija does not specialize in tau and any tau user would most likely destroy shija in a fight and a generic aesthetic blaze attack from gabi maru simply burns shija half to death while we've seen other characters completely eat this attack like it's nothing. Not using Tao really holds Shija back, but I will say one thing that definitely stands out about this character is their immense speed, because even when using Tao to predict an attack from Shija, Shija is still able to actually attack someone through sheer speed alone, with them still noticing the attack, but then again, you gotta take the opponent that Shija was fighting at that moment into consideration, so maybe... Sagarin isn't the best example for using Tao, but go figure. Outside of being a crazy stalker for Gabi Maru and using ninja techniques pulled out of a hair salon, Shija can somewhat hold their own in a fight. Number 8, Gantet Suicide. Now, there is nothing you can take away from him. La la, I'm not listening. I can't hear you. Why is he above Shija of all characters? Come on, Rash Place. Are you stupid? Well, you want to know why? Because even without Tao, Gantet Suicide can casually cut through buildings. You absolutely gotta be kidding me. Not to mention now. Later in the story, he does end up using Tao, so just imagine how powerful that slice is going to be. So powerful enough that he can cut through a giant boat. You put Shija up against a Tenzin, she's just gonna die. But Gantet Suicide, he's gonna at least put up a fight if not kill that Tenzin. These hermits don't know what they're dealing with. To be fair, he's in his own league because I can't ever recall a character slicing things in half as easily as he does. And not only that, his bloodthirstiness and his conviction is on a completely different level, leading him to cut off his own arm, gouge out his own eye, just to be able to use Tao and get an edge over his opponent in a fight. So just imagine how far he's going to go just to get a simple win. Although Gantet Susai is really good for comical relief at times, that doesn't mean he should be slept on in the slightest. Number 7, Shion. If it isn't the blinded sword master himself being able to perceive Tao simply from being blind as a natural perk, 
She owns battle-hardened experience alongside his own utilities and resourcefulness when it comes to using Tao, earn him this spot on the list. He would go as far as the throwing his sword at an opponent to catch them off guard. Also, using every single bit of his instincts and easily being able to perceive what kind of move his opponent is going to do next, only to read it and adapt to it in the next moment. He would kill Tenzin by himself. And he is blind. Shion is also the guy to bring some of the best moments out of this series yet, with him fighting toe to toe with impossible odds and still winning. The one thing that I'd say that would definitely make him the most difficult to fight against would be the very fact that he can keep such a cool head and level headed mind in order to properly pull off his techniques, use precision and skill in order to fatally take down a Tenzin or anyone he's going up against for the most part. Trying to trick Shion in a fight will be the last thing you can do because he's just going to either see through it or already know what you're going to do before you even attempt to try. But not only that, his endurance is also insane, leaving him to survive numerous encounters by fighting to his very last breath and still managing to survive and overcome his opponents even when his body is on the brink of giving up on him. Even if his body is refusing to listen to him, he will cut you down. Number six, Chobe. Now would there be any doubt about this character? This is a guy who is able to adapt to any and every single situation and literally make the most of it immediately. And I think his head-on approach and pure strength is something to boast about because easily, and I mean easily, he was able to cut down the many numerous monsters on the Hell's Paradise with little to no effort, destroying everyone that would come in his path, so much so that he would connect with his ego and consider himself a rival to God himself because his absolute strength, deterrence, and willpower separates him from anyone else on this list, especially when you want to take into consideration that he can adapt to any situation by his instincts alone, makes him extremely dangerous. It's no wonder as to why he's being sent on the boat here. Not only that, but when he begins to use his Tau, he can create wooden constructs that bend to his will, and not only that, it applies to his metal Tau element. He can turn these same branches into blades, he can cause them to erupt from the ground. He has an infinite amount of resourcefulness that he can truly take advantage of whenever he's in this form. With that being said, his durability also increases and he has regenerative abilities. However, due to his element being metal, he would be extremely weak to any fire user, leaving them to completely destroy him. But he could use his adaptive mind and his cunning to win. Then again, we also have to take into consideration his brute strength. Number five. Now this guy is a bit of an oddity with him being Jika. Jika is seriously in his own league. Here you can see a swarm of kunais being thrown with the intent to kill right out of his face and with a simple bokuto, not even an actual sword, a wooden training prop. He is able to propel them right back at the people that threw the kunais in the first place. I know this is a trait I keep bringing up in the video, but Jika can completely read his opponent's movements. So much so, his foresight allows him to see whether or not he is going to get killed and he can completely avoid any situation that he knows is going to take his life. Honestly, you could argue it's immortality because if you can read so deep into a situation that you can completely avoid getting killed by just simply focusing then i think it just goes to show that jika is someone that should not be messed with in the slightest and not only that his sword play is second to none leading him to eviscerate colossal monsters 10 times his size with one of them being the colossal squid that we've seen Tenza and Nuruguay struggle to take down with one swipe of his sword, he executes it like it's no different than a human being. Gontetsusai would even consider him a god slayer. With his completely nonchalant attitude 
makes his demeanor and power over encompassing because his sword is literally made of bamboo and he's cutting as if it were an actual sword cutting through things that normal human beings honestly people that were using Tao with an actual sword do not cut as deep as Jika using simple bamboo and not even fully mastering his own Tao. So you can literally only imagine what he's capable of and even then you could argue his power is plot armor because he could even read through his situation to see when he dies. So he's just going to simply avoid any outcome that's going to lead to his death. He is undoubtedly a monster. Number 4, Gabi Maru the Hollow. Now without a doubt, Gabi Maru happens to be the most gruesome fighter in the entire series and I don't think anyone can really argue that. He will bite your throat out, poke out your eyes, gouge out your fucking innards with his fingers, set you on fire, throw dirt in your eyes. He will literally use every disgusting, heinous method in the book to win, making him a cold-blooded night stalker and murderer to boot. I mean, he's the best ninja out there. I don't think anyone can argue that. He would master fire nimpo techniques and completely decimate anyone he faces, ultimately cremating them with his fire by burning them to nothing but ash. He is able to take on Tenzens without even fully mastering his Tao and his endurance is in a completely different league with his mind being numb and his body being completely broken and brittle he is still able to fight with the sole intent of destroying mutilating and killing his opponent leaving nothing left his twisted way of fighting has earned him a spot on this list but even then after learning Tao, after finding a middle way he would become even stronger Leaving him the ability to kill his opponents in an instant. Leaving him to kill Genin of the Iragakure ninja where at least fewer than 1 in 10 actually end up becoming cold-blooded ninja killers. And he makes these same above average elites look like child's play. He makes them look like nothing. So I think we can recognize how great Gabimaru is. Number three, Sagiri. Of course, I know everyone's, why is he so high? Oh, this is so musty. This guy always has the worst top tens. <laughs> She's number three because the manga says that she is stronger than Gabi Maru because of her Tao. The Tao is power, okay? Tao makes you what you are in this series. That just That's just how it is, man. She just happens to be the most gifted in Tao. She's a Taoist. She ends up fighting the main baddie of the story and having Gabi Maru ultimately end up being a sneak attack. But Sagirin would ultimately be the one to actually be the spear of the plan. The person that can actually make the defeat of Rien possible. And even then, Gabi Maru would even say that Sagirin is stronger than him. Yes, this is true. I know how much you guys like, oh, the main character is always the strongest Whatever you say in these top tens is bogus. I'm sorry, it's the truth. Number two, Shugen. I don't care what anyone says. This guy is a complete monster. He definitely deserves his spot on the list. He mastered every other Asaimon style by simply watching them. And his conviction is literally unmatched. Through sheer willpower alone, he's able to complete and do anything he sets his mind to. I don't think it takes a genius to truly understand how insane of a character Shugen is throughout this entire series. He is easily the last person you want to run into in this list. I swear there is nothing you can do against him because he already has so many Asaimon powers mastered and not only that he can change any element of his Tao and make it so that he directly counters you and can easily kill you without even trying. No matter what you do, he can just switch his element of Tao and just directly counter you. There is literally no beating that. His willpower followed by his sword strength allows him to cut through some of the biggest structures we've seen in this entire manga. All in one fell swoop. 
even Gon Tetsusai would struggle doing what Shugen does. He can even punch the head off of some of the biggest monsters on the Hell's Paradise. I don't think anyone can argue about this placement. Number one, Rien. Well, considering the fact that they couldn't even beat Rien, no matter what they did, Rien just simply regenerated and put her body together like nothing even happened. And not only that, Rien is able to kill everyone in seconds with simple force pushes and by even having the power to shoot lightning from her fingertips. And if that doesn't convince you, they didn't beat her. They did not defeat her at all in the slightest. She killed herself. If none of the, if no one can beat her in the series and she has to kill herself, there is absolutely nothing anyone can say to argue this point.